Hello, I got a little bit of an update. I'm just going to start off by showing the. Oh, uh, we got the block all sealed up in the plastic, but you can see where we've got the uh, freeze, you know, brass freeze plugs, galley plugs, cam, cam retainer plate. Got our camshaft in place set. You know, as you guys knew, cylinders have already been honed to fit. We spent several hours, apparently I'd forgotten how long it takes to actually hand file piston rings, but the uh, piston rings that we got for this motor were the uh, total seal, and they, re they recommended what they call low boost, low boost level was I see, 10, 100, 10, seven thousandths per inch of, of cylinder bore. So basically, what we did was uh, 28. I don't know if you can read that bag or not, but we did each cylinder specific the way you're supposed to, and they recommended 28 thousandths top ring, 28 thousandths second ring, and then a minimum of 15 thousandths on your oil control rings. We got all six cylinders, you know, individually uh, hone fit, 28, 28, and 15, or slightly a little bit more. I don't think any of them went over 16 thousandths. Uh, what we were looking at when we, this is not the crank for the motor, by the way. This is just the old crank out of the 96 block. But basically what we're trying to fabricate here is a way that we can uh, support and spin the crankshaft we're going to use because when we were checking the clearances in the block on the uh, after we got done with the rings the other day we uh, mocked up the bottom or the, we put the crank in torqued everything checked you know and the number one and number four mains were right right at three thousandths clearance, but the two center main bearings were just too tight. One of them was barely two thousandths clearance, and the other one I think was just barely over two thousandths, which is really weird because we had that crankshaft worked, you know, that precision crankshaft in Lee Summit, Missouri, and I just can't believe that they were that different. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, uh, the, oh, I guess the mains or the crank, I mean, everything is sitting straight and true. Like, whenever you torque it and get an actual reading, if you, if you try using the pla uh, plastic gauge, it's really straight. Like, there's no wavering in the crush on the plastic gauge. I mean, everything is good in that aspect or that respect. But... We want to find a way to mount that crank in this fixture, turn it with a drill motor, you know, at a reasonable RPM. We're going to put as much lubrication as we can because we don't want to hurt, hurt any journals because our number one and four are doing fine. But we need to polish, you know, basically turn, turn this into a, crankshaft polishing adventure we had considered just taking the stupid crank back to the shop that originally uh, did the work for us but we can tailor what clearances we want on it if we can get this stupid fixture going now one thing we have noticed before anybody posts that this fixture is specifically designed so that we can polish the number two and three main journals and the rods. We can also work the rods. But we would have to configure something different if we needed to work on the one and four. So we understand that. We just thought it would be uh, interesting to be able to, you know, basically your material removal will be done with probably 320 grits, uh, abrasive... Uh, material and then we've got 400 grit to polish it out and make it look you know as smooth as possible 
because technically you could polish it as shiny as you want even down to just leather burnishing to give it a mirror polish we're going to see what it looks like at 400 grit and go from there if it needs to be shinier or whatever that's fine but the thing we were going to mention was you in a race engine they recommend a little bit wider clearances and of course this thing has those bigger rod journals so we're going to try to factor that in I mean I've got 3,000 a good strong 3,000s on the one and four main so you know if, if I polish that out at some point with just uh, the shoestring and, and uh, emery cloth technique to a, maybe a, a fat three you know up to three and a half but I want to make sure we have plenty of clearance on those mains to keep cool oil going through there and keep everything floating because your crankshaft should be floating on a film of oil it's when the uh, journals if the journals ever make contact with the bearing surface that's when you're going to have problems but I want to make sure there's plenty of uh, film of oil in there and uh, hopefully we can make this thing work out uh, the heads they're down there they're probably about 65 percent done still got a little more tweaking to do on them but we've got to finish our fixture first and see if we can get those uh, get those two journals out to spec then we're probably going to mic and start checking our rod bearing clearances but I just want to let you know we are still working on it I apologize that every time I seem to show the engine block now it's in a bag but it's super super clean and we want to keep it that way so anyway that's an update on the turbo 4.3 build Hopefully we'll be able to get this thing rolling a little bit faster and a little bit uh, more detail in the next video. Thanks for watching.